Address books and distribution lists. I think the concept of the list really became super popular with David Letterman's top 10 list. Oh sure, lists have always been around, I guess. Baseball, player statistics, American top 40, pop song lists, stuff like that. But the top 10 list has almost become Americana as it's been kind of water cooler comedy conversation for years. Now, if I was going to make my own top 10 list of important Outlook 2003 topics, this nugget would definitely be in the top three. Address books and distribution lists are what make Outlook so effective in today's growing, scalable enterprise organizations. So let's dive right into this important topic. In this CBT nugget, we have four main objectives. First of all, we want to look at the different address books in Outlook 2003 and how to configure those address books. Then, we want to look at managing and finding contacts as they relate to address books. Thirdly, we want to look at Outlook's autocomplete feature and other features. And then fourth, distribution list management. All right, let's get to it. If you had to send email messages to the number of people that you could count on one hand, there would probably be no real need to store addresses in some kind of searchable list. This is rarely the case, however, so every email client worth its salt is going to be able to store a bunch of addresses, and Outlook 2003 is no exception. Now, it is an exception in the number of different types of address lists and locations that Outlook can work with. Now, realize that we're going to be talking about the Outlook contacts folder in this exploration of address lists, and they go hand in hand. Realize, though, that there is a dedicated nugget for contacts earlier in this series entitled Working with Contacts. If you haven't seen that movie, then I suggest you take a look at that one first. Now, one of the confusing things for people new to Outlook is the number of locations for addresses. And this option expands if you're using Exchange Server as well. One thing is a constant, however. On every Outlook installation, even ones with no email account configured, the default is called the OAB, okay? The Outlook Address Book. Now, on a fresh install, the OAB will show a single location for storing your addresses. It kind of consolidates all your contacts, and that's in the Contacts folder. Now, also know that the OAB is really kind of a virtual address book because it isn't a separate file from my data store. For instance, throughout this nugget, I've been storing my contact information on my Exchange server data store, in my mailbox enabled user account. So the OAB is really just a view into my contacts folder. So the contacts folder and the OAB are practically speaking identical. If you want to further segregate your personal contact information from your business or organizational addresses, then you might want to generate a personal address book or a PAB file. The PAB is also good to use to share certain contacts with other users as well. Now you might be familiar with this if you worked with Exchange 5.5 or Outlook Express. This PAB is not linked to your contacts folder, so your options are going to be different and limited, as we'll soon see. And by default, you don't have a PAB file or a personal address book, so you have to add it. And we'll do that here in just a bit. Now the global address list with the GAL is available to differing degrees when your Outlook profile includes an Exchange client account. The GAL sits up on an Exchange server or servers and offers up mailbox and mail-enabled users, uh, Exchange contact recipients, mailbox-enabled security groups, uh, public folders, distribution groups, and even addresses outside of your organization. And remember, only an exchange administrator can create and manipulate address data in the global address list. And some creative admins in a large organization may have created additional address lists as well that your user account may or may not be able to see using the Outlook client. Well, that's kind of the big picture for our address book options. This will become more clear as we actually get into the Outlook 2003 interface. So let's go add a personal address book that we can use for personal contacts and sharing information. 
Now I'm logged into Outlook 2003 with my user account and my exchange organization, my Windows 2003 domain as mshannon at nuggetlab.com. And as you can see here, I do have a contacts folder. This is my Outlook address book. It just happens to be stored in my data store up on an exchange server as part of my mailbox for this user, Michael Shannon. Now we do also have, if you remember from earlier, I do also have an IMAP account configured. Now we're going to talk about this a little bit later on in this Nugget series when we get to offline solutions. So we'll deal with that in a second. But realize as far as my data storage management goes, this is up on an exchange server. Now, I might decide that I want to add a personal address book that's going to have, let's say, uh, contacts for my class reunion that's coming up uh, about 15 months from now. And I also want to be, have the ability to share that particular personal address book with other users. So let's go ahead and create a PAB now. Now realize I cannot do this while I'm in Outlook 2003, so I need to go ahead and close out of Outlook first before we do this. To add a PAB to my profile, I want to right click on the Outlook icon. I don't have one on my desktop. I'm going to go to the Start menu, find the Outlook icon. It says Email Microsoft Office Outlook. Right click and choose Properties. Now I'm going to choose the option for Email Accounts. This isn't an email account. I'm not creating an Exchange client or a POP3 or an IMAP account. I'm creating a new directory. Click on Email Accounts. And I want to add a new address book. So I'm going to choose this radio button and click on Next. This is going to be what's called an additional address book. And it's going to be a personal address book. Now I can only create one of these. If I've already got one of these uh, existing, I'll get, a, I'll get a little message telling me that I can only create one of these. I'd have to go back, choose this option to view or change, and then remove the existing PAB and then come back to here and then create my new PAB. Click on Next. And again, this is really the only option that you really have in your personal address book. How do you want to show your names? First name, then last name, or last name first and then first name. We'll choose last name first. Click on OK. Click on Close. And now we can go to look at Outlook and we can take a look at that particular uh, PAB. Okay, now I can open up Outlook and go and play with my PAB, my personal address book, by just going to uh, start. I don't have an icon on the desktop, of course. We'll go up here to email, go to my Outlook profile, and in my calendar I want to start out here. And let's go up to Tools, Address Book, or Control Shift B. And of course, we, we click on this little down arrow here. I'm looking for my personal address book, which, by the way, has no entries in it right now. But if I want to add some contacts, for example, some of the people I went to, my classmates from high school, I'll click on New Entry. And this is going to be very important here. I want to choose New Contact, but since I created a personal address book and a PAB file, let's go ahead and put this entry in the personal address book. Uh, by default, it wants to stick it in your Outlook address book. And again, the interface you're going to see is a whole lot different. For example, let's say I chose the default option here. This looks just like a, an entry for my Outlook address book. But unfortunately, that's not what I created my PAB for. So I'm going to close this out. I want to go ahead and create a new entry that's going to be placed in my personal address book. What kind of entry type is it? What kind of address does this person have? Is it an X400, Microsoft Mail, CC Mail? Uh, this is an internet address, so I'll choose this option, click on OK, and now we can see the property is quite a bit different than what we see for our default OAB that we've seen earlier throughout this Nugget series, especially if you saw the contacts uh, video from earlier. The display name, this guy's name is Paul Tynert, uh, my buddy from high school, and his email address, I'm going to make something up, so don't try to email him because this is not his email. Uh, something.net, okay? And then, of course, business information. I can put in his first name and his last name. He's an accountant. I can put in his address. He owns his own company, so he's the president, uh, not the not the president. <laughs> uh, 
He's the president of his company, and I can put the office, his assistant's name is Manny, and then I've got other information as well. Uh, his phone number, his business number is going to be, we'll make something up here, 512 area code 555, and then there we go. I can put more phone numbers in here besides just the business. I got his home number, home to, mobile pager, notes about uh, Paul Tyner. Click on OK, and then there he is, Paul Tyner and his primary phone number. My first contact uh, for my reunion people, for my class reunion, in my personal address book. All right. Now, there are some other options to set for the PAB. Let's take a look at those real quick. I'll just close out of here. When Outlook is open, we want to go up to Tools, Email Accounts, and we're going to View or Change an Existing Address Book. Click on Next. We want to use our personal address book. Both the PAB and the OAB use the MAPI protocol, and we'll go and change our personal address book. I may want to rename this from Personal Address Book to uh, Reunion Addresses. Something like that that's more, uh, makes more sense for why I created this PAB. The path, by the way, is, is in my local profile on the C drive, documents and settings, my particular profile. But I may want to go ahead and browse and share this or put this file up in a, in a network share somewhere, maybe so my administrator can back this up with his backup strategy if that's the case. I could just browse through here, go look for my network places, Go to the entire network, my entire Microsoft Windows network in the Nugget Lab domain. Find a server, and here's a share on that server called the Shared PAB. I could give it a name, a mailbox name, maybe MJS uh, PAB, whatever I want to name that, and I can put it in this particular share if I want to. I think I'll cancel out of here and just stick with the default. I could also go and find an existing PAB file and share the information in that file. We saw this earlier. If I want to come in now and do the display names by last name first or first name first, I can choose that option here. And again, some additional notes on this particular uh, PAB. All right, that's what I want to do here. So I'll click on OK and we'll click on Finish. Now if I go up to Tools, Address Book, my new address book should be called Reunion Addresses, and there's Paul Tyner. All right. Now, I could have stayed in that dialog box, but I wanted to show you, you can also get to your address book from this toolbar here by choosing this address book icon. And what I want to do is, I want to see my contacts folder, this folder right here in my OAB by default, instead of my global address list. So I'll go to Tools, Options. And I'm going to say show this address list first. I want to see from my Outlook address book my contacts by default. I also want to keep personal addresses in the reunion addresses folder that I just created that file. And also when I send mail, I want to check names using my contacts first. Then we'll use the global address list. I'm going to click on OK. And we'll close out of here. And now when I go back and click on this address book button, I should see the contacts that are listed right here in this contacts folder. Let's go back up to calendar, click on address book, and there they are. Excellent. Now realize that after a long period of time, your global address list on your Exchange server could have dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of entries in it, uh, addresses from all over your organization and outside your organization. If it's your Outlook address book or your contacts folder, that too could also have plenty of addresses in it as well. So if you want to go and do some searching, just go up to your address book, choose that little icon, and go to Tools, Find. Now I'm looking here real quickly, I'm looking at my contacts folder. Again, this is my Outlook address books. So when I go to Tools, Find, I don't have a whole lot of options. If I just go in there and type in something like Skip and click in OK, uh, Skip's going to come up, Skip T. Malou there. That's the, I'm seeing again the search results. I can always go back again and look at all my contacts. Now, I could also type in here Skip in this little box, and it will go and find that, kind of skip down to skip, so to speak, and find that. Now realize if I'm looking in my PAB and my OAB, that's really all I got when I go to Tools, Find. However, if I'm looking in my global address list, 
If I choose that option and I go to Tools, Find, I have a much richer uh, type of search feature that has more LDAP fields in it. The display name, first name, last name, title, company, alias, office, city, things like that. So it depends on which address book you're looking at, the global address list or your OAB or PAB for your find options. All right. Now, as far as editing or making modifications to these addresses goes, I could go to my contacts folder, which is my OAB, or I could go up to the address book again. If I want to make a change to somebody in my OAB, I could just go ahead and just double click on it. Bill Johnson and make a modification to that there. Barry Pfeffer, make a modification to that, that here if I want to. It allows me to do that. Let me close that down. I'm not going to save the changes. If I go up here to my personal reunion addresses, I can make a change to Paul Tynert. I need to make a change to a phone number here, maybe his home phone number, 512-555. I'm making this up. Click on OK, and the change is made. However, notice if I go to my global address list, scroll down, pick out, let's say, Anthony Sequeira, double-click on that, I can view information. Again, this is a, I'm a, allowed to view this by my Exchange Administrator, also based on my user account and the permissions that I have in my Exchange organization in my Windows 2003 domain. If I try to add a company here for Anthony, a department, as you can hear, ain't going to happen. This change has to be made by an Exchange Administrator up on the Exchange server. Again, that's in the global address list. So keep those things in mind when it comes to editing your addresses in the different locations and the different types of address books and address lists. As you can see, I'm over in my inbox and just realize that at any time if I open up a message I receive from somebody, uh, either within my organization or from the outside, on the from area here, just double click and at any time I get this dialog box where I can go in and I can add this person to my contacts. So whenever you get an email from somebody, if you want to add them to your contacts, in this case my Outlook address book, my contacts folder, just click on the add to contacts button and it will do that for you automatically. Okay, one last thing I want to show you as it relates to uh, address books and addresses. If I want to go up and create a new email message, if I go up to new, now I'm, I'm in my calendar, so if I click on the new button, it's going to create a new appointment. I want to use the down arrow, create a new mail message while I'm in my calendar. And notice when I go to the to area, or it doesn't matter, to or cc, if I type in the letter A, it tries to auto-complete based on information that it has in the address book. Uh, the global address list and of course my contacts as well in my Outlook address book. If I have a really huge list of contacts, this could be really annoying, this huge giant list that tries to autocomplete as I continue typing along the way. I may want to turn off this default automatic feature of Outlook 2003. Let me show you how to do this. I'm going to close out of here without saving it. I'm going to go to Tools options, our old friend, in the email area, I'm going to choose email options, and I'm going to go to the advanced email options button. Now, you might want to spend some time here. We haven't visited this area in great detail, and we won't in this nugget, but you may want to come in here and kind of tweak this a little bit for your own uh, flavor, for your own uh, favorite um, ways of using mail in Outlook 2003, the way you save messages, what happens when they arrive in your inbox, uh, sending message options. But look down here. This particular checkbox, I want to clear this out. I do not want to suggest names while completing the two carbon copy and blind carbon copy fields. In other words, I want to turn off the autocomplete feature, click on OK, OK, and then that feature goes away. All right. Now, of course, the larger our pool of addresses gets, the more difficult it'll be to send a single message to multiple users, especially with that autocomplete feature turned off that we just looked at. Now, Outlook distribution lists let you broadcast an email to a bunch of users with a single entry or a single address. Now, if I go up here to Tools and I go to Address Book, if I look at my global address list, I have the ability to kind of leverage existing distribution lists and distribution groups that our Exchange administrators have created. 
but we really can't get into those in too much detail here because that's really for an exchange administrator nugget. Now we've got nuggets for Exchange 5.5 that Dan Charbonneau did, a fantastic nugget. And I've also done nuggets for Exchange 2000 and Exchange 2003. You might want to check those out. Now we can leverage those uh, into our actual distribution list that we create uh, on our Outlook 2003 side. We want to look here at a very simple method for setting up distribution lists in our personal address book or more importantly our Outlook address book. And The cool thing is we can include addresses from the Exchange Global Address list that we're looking at here now. We can include addresses from the Contacts folder and the personal address book. In addition, these can be Exchange addresses, X400 addresses, Internet addresses, and others. I want to go to the Contacts folder and I'm going to work from here for a little while. To create a logical grouping of email addresses, I'm just going to go up to the New button here and look at the down arrow. Not a new contact, but a new distribution list. When I click on this option, I'm going to get this dialog box. I'm going to call this distribution list uh, My New List. Very clever. And I'm going to select members from, and again I have all those address book options. I can add members from my Outlook uh, address book, Anthony Sequeira. I can add Beth Simpson. I can add Craig Suter. I can add Skip Tumalu, Sammy Shannon. I'll go up here and I'll say, let's go to the uh, global address list, all contacts. And I can add a couple contacts from here. I'll add Sherry Larson and uh, this Paul Grapey character. I can also go up here and say, let's look at my, uh, the entire global address list. Oops. All users. And I can say, we'll add from this, we'll add Marvin Harvey, and we'll add Rhonda Jones. And then I can also go up to that personal reunion addresses and say, let's add Marvin Harvey, or let's add Paul Tynert. There we go. Now I can click on OK. And now I've got, and this is one of the really great things I like about Outlook 2003. When you create your distribution list, it shows you these individual users. It gives you an icon that represents what kind of address it is, SMTP addresses. And then over here it gives you the actual email address itself. At any time, you can remove any one of these individuals. I don't really want Marvin Harvey in here. I can remove them. I can select new members. I can also add a new member by going in and saying, look, I'm just going to create this member on the fly with a, with a display name, an email address, and I can also add them to my contacts right here from the distribution list area. So I can kind of kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to go ahead and save and close this. Now I can go up to Tools and go to my address book and I can see here in my Outlook address book I now have a distribution list called My New List. I can double click on that and see the members of the list. I can add members. I can add a brand new person that's not even existing now in any type of global address list or in my Outlook address book, my personal address book, or I can remove those. Once you add these, you can always click on Update Now to refresh this. And again, just like every other object in Outlook 2003, I can go in and create multiple distribution lists, and I can categorize these distribution lists and use categories, and I can search and filter and view based on those categories. As well, I can also add additional notes about this distribution list and its members. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of here, or just save and close. Now notice this also. When I'm ready to go send an email message, if I go up here and click on the little down arrow, I want to create a new mail message. Now, when I choose the To button, I can go and choose My New List. Click on To, and it's going to send an email to all those individuals. Now if I click on this Expand button, it's going to actually expand the list out, and it's going to show actually all the people that are in that actual list. Now, some people might not want to be uh, in that particular view. You want to send it to all the distribution list, but not have that show up uh, when the recipient gets the email. If you need to do that, the only real way to do that is to go to Options here and send this, add the BCC field, the blind copy field, 
and go ahead and send to that particular group my new list as a blind copy, okay, to do it that way. So uh, keep that in mind. So anyway, one great way to send to all these people is of having to go to click on two and add each one of these individuals by holding the control key down and doing that whole that whole thing to get all those users in there. It's, it takes a lot of time. It's not very efficient. And distribution lists are a really powerful way to go. All right, great job. As you can see, I'm back over on my Exchange server in my console looking at Active Directory users and computers on an Exchange server Nugget1 in NuggetLab.com. Now realize you can also uh, leverage your distribution list or distribution groups on your Exchange server. Those are set up by a system administrator. So just in case you're an Exchange admin or you become one in the future, I want you to know how to create a distribution group on your server. Now realize you can't create these uh, in your global address list or other types of address list from Outlook, but you can modify them if you're the list owner. Now if I go to the users container and right click on here, I can create a new group. And what this is is going to be a global distribution group. And I'm going to call this something like uh, partners. And I'm going to click on next. I need to also give this an exchange email address. Click on next. And then what I would do is this. In my partners distribution group, I would right click on it, go to properties, and then I would add, by doing an LDAP search, I would add all the members to this particular distribution group. People in my organization and contacts or recipient objects outside of my organization. I can either add, I can also add other security groups as well if it applies to this partners distribution group. I'll go ahead and click on OK. Let's go back over to Outlook 2003 and see how this distribution group would show up and how I could email to those particular users. Now if I go up to new and drop down and create a new mail message in the to button, I click on that. By default, of course, I'm looking at my Outlook address book and here's my new list I created a while ago. But if I show names from the global address list, particularly the all groups area, I'll now see I've got the domain user security group that's mailbox enabled. I've also got a couple of others, a couple of other distribution groups, sales contacts and partners, and I can now send an email to all these exchange distribution groups by simply choosing these and just adding them into this particular area as well. So that's a great way to use and, and leverage exchange distribution groups, and in my case, in Windows Server 2003. All right, great job. In this very important nugget on address books and distribution lists, we covered four main areas. First of all, we looked at configuring and creating different types of address books in Outlook 2003. There are different locations and there are different versions. We also looked at managing and finding contacts in the Outlook address book as well as your personal address book. We looked at Outlook's autocomplete feature, how to turn that off. And then finally, distribution list and distribution list management. I hope this CBT nugget's been informative for you. I want to thank you so much for viewing.